In this video, I'm going to talk about how to horizontally stretch or compress a function. I'm also going to talk about how to vertically stretch or compress a function. So basically what we're doing is we're taking these lines, uh, taking these functions here, and we're going to, in this case, we're going to horizontally stretch this. Now, if, you're going to, if you can well imagine, if we take this and horizontally stretch it, horizontal is left and right. So we're going to make this line wider. It's going to get, uh, it's not going to be as steep as what it once was. Okay, so that's the general idea of what we're going to do. We're going to horizontally stretch uh, this function by a factor of three, and we're going to see how that affects the function itself, how it changes the function. Okay, so now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, find a couple of points on this line, and then we're going to horizontally stretch them, and then uh, we're going to look to see how that affects the equation itself. So we're going to basically rewrite the equation. Okay, so a couple of things I need is I need a couple of points. So the y-intercept is a good point. Uh, here's a good point here, negative 1, negative 1. And then another point here, it looks like 1, 3. And uh, that, that's, that's a good number of points for now. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to horizontally stretch this. Now when we horizontally stretch, horizontally means left and right, which is our x-axis. Now remember your, your x and y axes. Um, we're going to take these points and we are going to stretch them by a factor of three, which means we're either going to multiply or divide by three. Basically, is kind of what it means. Okay, now when we horizontally stretch something, that means we're going to multiply by three and we're going to take the x coordinates and we're going to multiply them by three. So notice that this one here is one away. Okay, it has an x coordinate of one. Okay, and then now what I'm going to do is if I if I stretch that by a factor of 3, that's going to change that x-coordinate from a 1 to a 3. So 1, 2, 3. Yep, 1, 2, 3, right about there. Okay, so what we have just done is we've taken this point and moved it, basically just moved it from a position of x uh, having an x value of 1 to now it has an x value of 3. Okay, multiplied by a factor of 3 is basically what we did. Okay, um, now for this one here, uh, this one is already, uh, it has a, uh, an x-coordinate of 0. So if I take that x-coordinate of 0 times 2, nothing actually happens. So that point is actually just going to stay where it's at. Okay? And then this point down here, a little, little distance of negative 1 here. So if I multiply by 3, it's going to go to negative 3, which is over here. Okay, Very similar to what we did up here. Um, let's do one more point just to get a little bit better idea of this. So this point down here, this right here is a distance of 2. Okay, I have an x-coordinate of negative 2. So if I multiply that times 3, that's going to be negative 6. So negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6 right over here. Okay, so notice how, how big of a change that is. Right here, we moved from, it was two points away, now it's six points away. It's a little difference of four here. This one was one away from my, uh, from my y-axis, now it's, now it's three away, which is a difference of two. Uh, but notice each one of these are going to be just a little bit different. Anyway, uh, connect the dots, and let's see what the equation of this line is. Let's see what the equation of this function is. Okay, so this is my g function. Make sure I label it correctly. It's my g function. All right, so now I'm going to write the equation for this line. All right, so g of x, g of x is equal to, okay, i got to find out what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. Well, the y-intercept actually didn't change at all. Uh, since the x-coordinate was 0, 0 times 3 didn't really change anything, um, that's going to stay where it's at. So I have a plus 1 for a y-intercept, but my slope is going to change. It looks like it got smaller. Now, that's kind of an odd way to think about it, but if you... If you take the x-coordinates and stretch them, my slope actually gets smaller. So notice my slope now is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Let's check another one. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. There we go. All right, so my slope is going to be a positive 2 thirds. I just checked it with a couple of different points here just to make sure I did those correctly. All righty. So as we look at this, we horizontally stretched this function by a factor of 3. Now, if you take a look at the function, huh, Basically, what this is, is if you compare these two, well, the y-intercept stayed the same, but the slope changed. Now, by a factor of 3 is the number that we used. Notice that our slope gets divided by 3. Okay, that's not a coincidence. That's done on purpose. All right, so now when you think if we're going to horizontally stretch something, the slope is actually going to get smaller. The slope is going to get flatter. Okay? It's not going to rise and run as much as what the original function was. So that makes sense that, in, that our slope goes from 2 to 2 thirds. We go from a pretty big slope of 2 to a pretty small slope of 2 thirds by dividing by 3. So in general, 
in general, I'm gonna have to. I'm actually gonna have to rewrite another one of these. Uh, in general, if I, um, you know what? Let me actually rewrite rewrite this now. F of x. If I want to change it, one over a times x. So now this one that I rewrote here, this is actually applies to this example that we have here. Basically, what happened is I I took the x portion. I took the x portion of my function and I took that and basically divided by the factor that I was using. Okay, this is a factor, factor of a. Okay, so basically that's what I did. I took two, the x portion, okay, right here, I took this x portion and I divided it by three. Okay, which got me to two thirds. And so that's represented down here. Now this is for a horizontal, horizontal stretch. Okay, so a horizontal stretch. Now, the thing is, is you can horizontally stretch or you can actually horizontally compress. Okay, now if we horizontally compress something, it actually gets taller. If we compress this line, it's going to get taller. Okay, now what happens there is you actually take your x coordinates and you would divide by your factor, but in essence, that makes your slope taller. And so you would actually multiply um, your x times this. And so this is the notation that we, do, we, we would use for a horizontal horizontal compression. Okay, horizontal compression. There we go. So yeah, you get, you really got you really got to think about this when when you're when you're doing your horizontal stretching compress. So basically, it comes down to um, you're, you're, it's going to be by a factor of three. So you got to think to yourself, am I going to multiply times three or divide by three? And it all really depends on if you're if you're stretching or compressing. So I like to think of it this way: it, my slope. Do I want to make my slope bigger or smaller? So in this case, we were horizontally stretching this function, horizontally stretching it. I wanted my slope to get smaller, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by three. I want my slope to get smaller, so I'm going to divide by three. That's the kind of the thought process you need to have when you're doing this. And that's kind of the simple way of doing that. Okay, that's horizontal stretching and compressing. Let's do real quick the vertically vertical stretching and compressing. Uh, it's actually really very similar to what we just did. Um, but uh, it's, it's a little bit backwards, and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going, to, we're going to take some points. So here's a point. Here's a point. And notice we're using the same function. And we're going to vertically, vertically stretch this function by a factor of three. Okay, so we're using the same factor, but we're going to vertically stretch this time instead of horizontally stretch. Okay, so let's find a couple more points. Negative one, negative one. And this uh, negative two, uh, what is that? One, two, three, negative three. Okay, negative two, negative three. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, be going to vertically stretch these by a factor of three. Now what that means is I'm going to take the y coordinates, the y coordinates, and multiply them by three. Vertical stretch, vertical goes up and down. Remember, here's your x, here's your y. Vertical goes up and down. So I'm going to take my y coordinates, the ones that go up and down, and I'm going to multiply them by a factor of three. Okay. Okay. Now this is actually going to be a little bit tough for the points that I have here because I have a right here. This is three. This is a height of three, and I'm going to take that in times by three. Well, three times three is nine, which is all the way up here. It's actually off of my grid, so I can't really plot that point. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's just move on to the next one. Right here, I have a y coordinate of one. Take one times three. It's going to be three. So my y intercept actually moves up to right there. Uh, this point here, I, it has a y coordinate of negative one, down here, negative one. And so take that times three, it's going to be negative three. So it's going to be down here. There we go. And now see, my other points that I have, my other points that I have uh, are going to be too big. Okay, this is a negative three for, a, uh, uh, for, my, uh, for my y coordinate here. This is a negative three. If I take that times negative uh, so sorry, take that negative three times three, it's going to get me nine. So it's going to be all the way down here. So I really can't graph it on this grid. Okay, so what I'm going to do, these are my only two points that I have that I could actually draw. draw. So I'm going to use the straightest line as I can to try and to try and draw what this function is going to look like. Not bad if I do say so myself. A little curve right there. But that is what my g function is going to look like. Okay, so that's what a vertical stretch looks like. Everything is going to get taller. Okay, everything's going to get taller. Okay, so now let's, now let's write the rule for g of x. Let's like, actually write the function itself. Okay, so I need a slope and a y-intercept. All right, so what I need is a slope. Well, I do have two points. So I can find the slope. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. Whoa, got a slope of 6. Okay, and then I have a y-intercept of 1, 2, 3. Got a y-intercept of positive 3. 
Okay, now as I compare these two functions, notice that, okay, actually, <laughs> we're, we're vertically stretching by a factor of 3. Notice what happened. 2x became 6x. That's just timesing by 3. 1 became 3. That's just timesing by 3. So notice what we did. If we are going to, um, we took our function, we changed it by taking the factor and multiplying it times the entire function. This is what we call a vertical, vertical stretch. Okay, and this is by a factor, factor of A. Okay, so that one's actually a little bit easier than the last one. We just basically just multiply everything times that factor to make everything bigger, everything taller. Okay, and then we actually, we can actually vertically compress this. So I actually have to rewrite this a little bit. If I want to vertically compress something, if I want to vertically compress something, that's actually going to make it smaller. So as you can well imagine, if I want to make something smaller, I'm going to have to divide by that factor, okay, or multiply by 1 over that factor, which is the same thing. Okay, so this one would be for a vertical, vertical compression. Vertical compression. Okay, so if I want to if I want to vertically compress this line, it would actually get smaller. The slope would actually go down, so I would actually have to divide everything by that factor. Okay, so that's just a couple, that's just a couple of quick examples on how to do uh, your horizontal stretching and compressing and your vertically stretching and compressing, and then also the notation that kind of goes with that. Um, the big thing that that you can learn here though is that. If you're, if you're ever in doubt, if you don't remember a lot of this notation, that's actually not that big of a deal. If you simply just get your points on here and then modify those points, draw the new line, and then write your new equation, that's, that's basically good enough. That's basically what we're doing here anyway. The notation is basically just a, a quicker way of doing all of that. But again, um, both processes will get you the same answer. All righty. That is vertically stretching and compressing and horizontal stretching and compressing.